Welcome to Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast. There's episode we're going to talk about. There's episode. There's episode. We're, we're going to talk about <laughs> the Star Wars. Maybe I'm drunk. Maybe I'm not. I'm probably not. And then this you epi- are Tyler. And I'm me. I'm Michael. Yep, me. This episode, we're going to talk about the fact that it's a disgusting episode 110. A it's number, the disgusting episode. What you just said? the fact that it's a disgusting count of 110. Oh, okay. No. Not that the, the fact that we've gotten disgusting. this far yeah. is disgusting. Sure. That's what you're saying. Yep, I am me, Michael. You are you, Tyler. I am I am you, Tyler. <laughs> you are you. <laughs> yeah. I am me. Uh, and on this episode 110, I guess uh, we'll talk about whatever we want regarding Star Wars because nothing really is going on. Oh my god! <clears throat> Michael's suddenly <laughs> finding horrific pictures of Wookies on his on his laptop. The that- Forces of Destiny. Chewbacca figure. It looks like the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> kind of the first Planet of the Apes, or, or Lumpy from the, the Christmas <laughs> special. I don't know. There's more. There's more <laughs> evil in that face. <laughs> there's there's, a, dark, there? there's, there's a, darkness a darkness in those eyes. He's seen something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a he's coming for you. Great. Well, Michael. Yes, you've continued to go to Galaxy's that's Edge me. almost every single day. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Because you can't stop yourself. I told you the other day, I have a pass that lets me go to a real Star Wars place yeah. for, I mean, I've already paid for it. I was going to say for no money, but I did pay a lot of money for yeah. it. <laughs> but I've paid that money and it's behind you've me already, and I can forget about that now. you those costs and visits. Yes. And I have, a, gone, I have a, a thing, a card. You've gone at least once a week since we first went. Okay, not quite that no, much. No, no, you have. Think about it. <laughs> I've been, been every week since I we think first went. Five or six times at this point. A day. No. <laughs> <laughs> a week? <laughs> <laughs> five to six times a week. It's fine. It's not a problem. <clears throat> they don't turn you away at the door yet. They don't. <laughs> Not yet, but they recognize you. <laughs> Which is worse? They're starting to be concerned. Which is worse? The fact that they could cut me off or <laughs> they recognize me, but they don't cut me off. Right. Oh. They're enabling oh. you. Oh. So you've... You again. So you've been a lot. A lot. And you've experienced at least the... Uh, all of it. The horrors that I've are... experienced at least the all of it. <laughs> at least the whole. Yes, the whole. I have experienced the whole. Yeah. There's a good hole. It is all of it. The whole hole. <laughs> the whole hole. And recently you got stuck in the line for Rise of Resistance for a uh, I did. A, an inordinate amount of time. So <laughs> it was an ornament and out of time in that it did have an end. Well. Uh sure. when we went, we we talked about it already, but we walked right on. Right. Yeah, when you and I went, we just we we got our boarding pass and yeah, so as we soon as our up, time was called, we just walked straight in, basically directly to the riot and got on. We showed up early, or you know what was it, an hour early, an hour before opening. Yeah, waited in the big crowd, had our phones out, got our boarding passes right away, and then when our boarding pass was called, which it was called fairly quickly, within probably an hour of yeah. park opening, something like that. I think so. Yeah. Um. We walked right on. There was absolutely no wait. Walked straight to the pre-show and got right on the ride. No waiting at all. This time, we did the exact same thing with the group that I went. I went with uh, two of my sisters and did the exact same thing. Got there an hour before opening. The crowd was actually smaller than you and I, than the, the crowd where you and I were. We were a ways back from the land entrance. And the group that I went with just now... Uh, we were like almost right there at the entrance okay. to the land. Um, we got, I think, boarding group 39, which is a little higher than what you and I got, but yeah. not that much higher. No, no, we were, I think we were in the 30s. They didn't start calling boarding groups until an hour and a half after park opening. 
like that's the first not, groups. That's not a great sign. So I don't know what was going on, but yeah. yeah, that was that was the first red flag. And so they finally call us around, I think eleven, maybe ten thirty oh, or geez. eleven, something like that. So we go, and the line it looks fine. You know, it's not packed or anything. There's right. not a bunch of people crowded. But there was up an front. actual line, at least. But right? so we we get in, yeah, and there was a line. I would say we walked through the first third of the queue mm. with no people, and then you know we stop at the at the line, and we get in, and we probably get to the halfway point. Okay, and people just stop, and we're waiting 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 and nothing's happening and, and people start moving. sitting down in the line. We, you, you could see around the corner, a bunch of people in front of us were just mm-hmm. kind of waiting there, sitting down. There weren't any announcements about things being broken or, Weird. or anything like that. Yeah. It was really strange. And then, yeah, we get to around probably the 45 minute mark of being in this one spot and not moving. Yeah. Yeah. And they start doing the thing we talked about last episode where they were doing a Disneyland. Apparently they start handing out snacks to people. Right. They have a snack tray come through or uh-huh. to appease people. Water uh, and snacks. Uh, Vi Morality walked around. I actually talked to her, got a picture with her. She, I was wearing my Hoth uh, Rogue Squadron jacket mm. that I had bought at the park. And uh, she commented on it and she was like, yeah, you could pass for me. <laughs> says the black lady with blue hair to right. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen me, but I am not black and I don't have blue hair. <laughs> Imagine the color white. <laughs> all That's of all. It. That's all it. of it. That was the end of that sentence. <laughs> it's like my daughter said on the video she put on my phone the other day. It's so white. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I'm not going to explain any more than that. <laughs> nope. That's plenty, plenty. Um, yeah, which that was fun. I mean, I'm not the kind of person who would stop a character to talk to them, uh, but it was fun to, and she was just, she was really good. The, the lady that was playing her, yeah. she was, she was talking to pretty much every person in line, Jeez. uh, walking through the whole line. So yeah, we get to about probably the 50, 55 minute mark and you hear this kind of cheer go down through the line like the wave <laughs> and everybody stands up and we start moving and, and that was it yeah we get on the ride and ride the whole thing none of the scenes were down all of the Weird. scenes were active nothing was broken um uh, yeah i don't know what the deal was strange so it sounds like that i mean it, the the wait time is probably a little bit lower than what some people were experiencing at disneyland yeah but Still, I mean, yeah, because I've heard like hours and hours waits sometimes. Which it was is probably close to crazy. 90 minutes total, which maybe isn't that bad considering. Yeah, and, but, and it makes me think something you mentioned like they never announced anything, right? Can, can they announce that the ride's broken and break? Would they and break the I'm just trying to think of at what the point, facade? at what point do they do something and be like, you gotta leave. Well, stop waiting. That's not what I was thinking, but yeah, I mean, would they ever clear the line? They I have. Don't know. They had when there was a fire alarm recently, but that obviously makes okay. Well, required. I mean, for mechanical failures, like the fact that they didn't announce anything. Usually, in most rides, there would be some sort of overhead. You know, yeah, we're experiencing a technical difficulty. You right. Know? Even in you know haunted mansion, there's some kind of themed like, oh, the ghosts are doing whatever. And right. There's, there's some right. kind of theming to the message. But now there were PA- could they say something like that? There were like in universe PA announcements happening the whole time, but none of them referenced the ride being or like the systems being down or, you know, anything oh. like that. And I'm wondering, like, could you even have something like that with this theme? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, can you announce that? Right. We apologize for the delay of the first order in capturing you. Right. <laughs> Their timeliness is unexpected. I'm trying to think, too. I mean, I know this ride is extremely complex. Yeah. But what what would fail like that to where they can't load more people? Probably a ride vehicle itself. I'm trying to think of where the I've bottlenecks. Heard of, I've heard of people getting... The bottlenecks are the cruiser, right? You can only have that go through so many times. Right. Or, you know, you, you once you load a group on, you have to let that play out, and then they go. Right. 
Um, and then, I mean, I've heard of people getting, you know, um, lesser ride versions where like the room with Kylo Ren where he's, you know, jerking you around in your ride vehicles <laughs> where like that scene's broken and it kind of goes past it or through it. Well, right. So and I've heard of some scenes that have been broken that they still run the ride, even though a scene might not be working and there's oh, basically an alternate scene right. or a B version. So what part of the ride would be where they couldn't just go past it, move people past all it. of those stormtroopers fell over. <laughs> just <laughs> all, set all, all of them like dominoes. We were talking about, we were, after we ate the snacks, one of the people with me ate a banana and we were saying, just keep the banana with you and then throw it at one of the stormtroopers <laughs> oh, no. in that room. <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> you would be escorted very quickly off the premises. I'm sure. Another thing I was thinking too, this is unrelated to the ride being down, but the first, the people who play the first order officers are so good. Yeah, they're great. They, you have to, they have to have some kind of vetting process for like, can you stare at someone straight in the eyes for an extended period of time? Because everyone was doing that and it was right. really uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> I mean, they would, they were getting up right in my face they and looking straight in my down. eyes and just staying there. Yeah. It's extremely uncomfortable. Oh, that'd be so much fun. But yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what the deal was. The only thing I that I saw that looked a little weird was when you get off the cruiser. So the the first part of the ride is you're loaded onto a resistance cruiser that gets captured by the first order, right? Um, and it's being piloted by Amon Calamari, Lieutenant Beck, mm-hmm. uh, and and Nia Numb is up there too. I guess he's technically the pilot and Lieutenant Beck is the commander or something. He's the explainer. <laughs> <laughs> but he sits in this chair. It's a full animatronic thing. He sits in a chair and, and talks and twirls around and does stuff. <laughs> Tw- twirls. But after we after you get ca- or after we got captured this one time, we were getting off the cruiser and I looked back at Lieutenant Beck and he's just kind of sitting there limp in his chair. Like with dead eyes, just staring at the ground with his arms hanging down. <laughs> Maybe he was, just, he was just trying to get low and not be noticed. <laughs> they did not have a uh... deactivate. <laughs> they did not have like a, a I don't know a B state. <laughs> no, for him. Yeah, that, that is weird. weird that there's not like a uh, I don't know a, a blast shield or something that goes up over the cockpit yeah. area that just closes off that area once it gets captured it's funny because that sort of thing you'd expect to see on any other ride but because of the immersiveness of this ride and just how crazy it is and how great it is to see something like that is is just weird it throws you off what was it last week the carousel of progress which this is so very specific to disney world that most i don't know people that have never been to disney world do they even know what carousel of progress is the carousel of progress the carousel of progress is an extremely old ride that what debuted in the world fair and like was one of the very first rides, right? Should I talk into my microphone? Probably. <laughs> and the other last week, the, one of the scenes, the, the animatronic old guy that is the narrator for Carousel, Carousel of Progress, his hand just fell off. <laughs> <laughs> his whole hand just flump right under the floor, just popped off of his wrist and hit the ground. <laughs> this was, I think this was uh, last week. <clears throat> Did they do anything? Was this at the end right before it rotated or? No, this was still in like the butter churning uh, state. Like it was uh, like the 1920s era. era yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. his hand just fell off. Did anyone say anything or do anything? I mean, I think that just uh, changed scenes like it usually <laughs> would. And I'm assuming they fixed it after that. They have a group behind you at that point. Right. Right. Cause there's just, a, is there's just screw it back on. You just, is there a scene the before that on. one or is that the first scene? I can't remember. It's probably one of the first like two scenes. I would, I think I can't remember if there's one before that or not. Yeah. But the thing about that ride is it's just like an endless. Yeah. A loop loop. So there's, yeah, there would have been already people on there, I assume. But yeah, his hand just fell off into the ground <laughs> while he's gesturing <laughs> and talking. What gesture was he doing when it fell off? His hand was, his like arm was, his hand was up. Like he was like doing like a waving type <laughs> motion and his hand just, boom. At least he didn't like throw his yeah, own there's hand. There's pictures online of his ha- of his arm out and his hand just on the ground. Of that time when you were there? This, this happened, this was like a, this was like a, it happened a week or so ago. 
um, at Disney. But there's pictures of it online. But was this you? No, no, no. I was just telling oh, you this happened. I'm I didn't see it. You're there when you know. No. Oh, well, just makes it. Speaking of Disney things happening. That's still funny, but yeah, it would have been better if you were there to see that. Ned Rides had some trouble. Of, what, a couple months ago, someone jumped on the stage and started like messing with props during the <laughs> started, ride. Just, <laughs> started twerking. <laughs> <laughs> no, they tried. To, they started trying to turn the butter. Instead of the animatronic that's turning butter. Oh my god! Yeah, like he broke a bunch of, uh, but broke some stuff on the ride. Yeah, whatever. But <laughs> that, that's what that's what that's what Lieutenant Beck going limp made me think of. It's just right. a, a hand popping off. It's just something. Just somebody's, you know, just like the all those stormtroopers standing there, and just like one of the helmet rolls off, and there's just no head. There's nothing. It's just a body standing there without a helmet. That's. It's like that happening. Oh, can you imagine <laughs> how they would, <laughs> what would they do? <laughs> yeah. You would have to. I, I assume, would love there's all, there's to see like, a first order officer yeah. go over the barrier and try to put the guy's head back <laughs> on the animatronic. Trooper, put your helmet back on. <laughs> it's like fully his head. <laughs> not just. <laughs> no, no, it's the full head. Yeah. Just not, not, not acknowledging that he's headless. <laughs> Oh, I, you know, one of the things I guess that it didn't, I didn't realize it the first time we wrote it because it was just so overwhelming the first time, but that cruiser, and I noticed this happened with the group we were with too, that, or that I was with uh, the second time, uh, when, you know, you board that cruiser through one door and you do the whole thing. And then everybody in the cruiser turns towards the opposite door because yeah. there are two doors on either side of the cruiser. So everybody kind of naturally turns towards like, okay, the opposite door. Okay, we entered on door. this side, so obviously we're going to exit Because on we the other came side. in this side, but then the door behind you, the same door you came through opens, and now you're in the hangar. Right. And it's like it like throws you off. And I started thinking about, wait a minute, how did they do that? Because when you board, you're outside. You're in like an outside area. Does it actually move and go somewhere? Yeah, I think it would have to. It's the only way. I think it 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 That's... like retreats back through that rock, you know? Yeah. That it's next to. Maybe it has. I mean, I assume that would have multiple ride vehicles then too to be able to loop. Maybe if it's a if there's some way to switch out, but there's only one hangar, right? Yeah. There has to be only yeah. one hangar. So I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know. You could only have, I imagine you could only have one cruiser show happening at a time because then you have to unload those people onto the one hangar. So maybe, yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure they have the timing down to, you know. but it's just, it's just so cool. Like they, you know, they, it, it just, it throws you off enough to where you're not thinking about, wait, I'm on a ride. You're yeah, like, oh, I wonder how purposeful that I'm being is captured too. by the first order now. I need to follow directions. Like it just it takes you out. You're of so the, you're so discombobulated for that yeah. split second that you're just like, oh, I got to move. All the meta I have to obey. All the meta the thinking just goes out the window a little bit. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I wonder how purposeful that was to like throw you off of what's happening. To have a door on the other side like that too. Like why would you have that door? I mean, I guess you I have wonder. to because it's a cruiser. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe to unload people if you need to. Weird. Quickly. I never thought about that, but that makes that makes sense. Yeah. Well. So that was that. The <laughs> lifestyles of the rich and famous going to Disney five times a week. I'm telling you. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to do this, would you not? Uh, yeah. If you could. If I'm I could, saying. I would. <laughs> but I can't. The show I haven't. In other news. That's really it. There's no, nothing's happening with Star Wars, man. It's well, I guess from from the day this episode comes out, it's exactly, gonna be our first twenty minute episode. Should we exactly just end it here? one week from today, as of episode releasing, pro, the Project Luminous event will be happening. Uh huh. Um, which I, th I think at this point it's pretty definitive that it's just a comics and books um thing that is like one big story that's all tied into multiple. Uh, comics and and books and and novels and stuff, um, but that that event will be happening one week from today, as of episode releasing. So that'll be interesting to hear because one we already have 
a lot of books coming out at least, you know, more Thrawn, uh, the Alphabet Squadron books coming out in a few months. The, they've already started releasing some snippets, and the, the, uh, the cover has been released. The cover art for mm-hmm. that has been released. I guess those are the only two books that I can really think of other than the comic series that have been running, like the Kylo series is still coming out. Right. There's no other books, I guess, after other than those two. Is that? Hmm, no, there's a um. Books. What's a book? <laughs> <laughs> you finished one recently, didn't you? I almost did. <laughs> oh no, you didn't actually finish it. What was I reading? The Resistance one. It's the Spark of Res. No, is that? Spark of Resistance, the... I don't even remember what it's called. That's how much I've been reading it. The, the gumption of the resistance. Yep. Yes, the resistance is gumbo. <laughs> the schutzpah of Star Wars. Um, A cookbook. <laughs> schutzpah. <clears throat> what is that book that I'm thinking of, Michael? I know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so help me. Not, oh. Uh, I keep wanting to say Rise of the Resistance, but that's not it. Not the Queen's Shadow, because that one came out the last Queen's year. The Queen's Gambit. <laughs> that's not, that's a different one. <laughs> Wasn't, E.K. Johnst- Johnston was doing another book. E.K.G. <laughs> You're no help. <laughs> You're a horrible person. Is this a new book? Yeah. Are you just trying to remember the name of the book that I was supposed to be reading? I, that's what I thought. I don't care. I thought you were just trying to... <laughs> I don't care anything oh. about what you've done or haven't. <laughs> you ass. What's the book that I've read? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me. This is, this is your life. Help, I need to know the, the book that I'm reading. Man, uh. Yeah, well... Thinking is pointless now because I've I can't. Thinking is pointless. Yeah, isn't it always? Uh huh. Wasn't E.K. Oh, Johnston doing a new book? Can you imagine the people having to listen to this right now? <laughs> <sighs> what is the day? De- okay, well you looked up. Let's just have a break. You look up the name of this. I'll look up the name of the book that I'm trying to read. Queen's Peril. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I just shit myself. <laughs> the Queen's Barrel. <laughs> That's like the no. like the mineral. No. So E.K. Johnston wrote uh, the uh, Queen's Shadow, the pad book about Padme. She's writing oh, that new there's book. There's a sequel. Yes, Queen's Peril. Oh, um, I didn't know anything about this. It so. comes out in May. Resistance Reborn. That's it. That's the one that I am reading. <laughs> I was close with the the chutzpah. <laughs> Yeah, Queen's Peril, which is a prequel to Queen's Shadow, comes out in May. I knew there was another book. I just couldn't remember what it was. So we've got the Thrawn Chiss Ascendancy, book number one, coming out this year. We've got the Alphabet Squadron, book number two, coming out this year. And this, then this, uh, this um, Queen's Shadow prequel. Well, and don't forget the novelization, the Rise of Skywalker oh, yeah. novelization Skywalker in March. Novel- novelization. But other than that, those are the only books, I believe, that have been announced. So this whole Project Luminous thing is really the next big, I don't know, novel or story event that Star Wars is going to have because there really hasn't been anything else announced. So while I'm disappointed that it sounds like it's only regarding comics and books and, uh, and, and, and that, but I am excited that it is, I don't know, some kind of epic story that's going to be told across multiple formats. We've kind of talked about this before, but do you think it'll, do you think this is a setup for the next movie push? It depends on what it is, I think. Because they, you know, again, we've talked about this before, but the worlds of the, or at least the focus of the comic and book um, part of Star Wars Mm -hmm. hasn't really bled over into the movies much. No. You know, there's there's references, a handful of references here and there. And current stuff. There's been more references connecting the TV show, like Clone Wars stuff and Rebels stuff, yeah. to the yeah. movies than there has been right. books and comics. And there's, But there's been enough stuff recently that they've started referencing the High Republic era. 
which is just a, a, a very new term within the last six months, probably. That's like Republic around the Sith War era, like right. way back. Right, which, I mean, that, that term is fairly new, but it started getting, mentioning, started getting mentioned in a lot of different places very close together. Mm. Um, so I really do wonder if this Project Luminous thing might be some kind of High, high Republic era uh, story. Right. Which is what people thought that possibly the new, the next film would be about is some kind of High Republic era film. So it, it'll be interesting to find out what it is. I just, I'm at that point where, I mean, well, I, I love the, obviously I'll, I'll read anything, any Thrawn book, any Thrawn book. I don't, that's a given. The um, Alphabet Squadron book, uh, the first one was, was really good, but it is like, like you said, one, it hasn't, the movies haven't really tied into the books at all. And, but the stories have all been, again, the stories have all been revolving around something we've already had, much like the movies, much like the TV shows. Right. Except for Mandalorian. Where it is, it is. Well, even then, though, yes, that's. To a point, yeah. That is separate. It's been separated from the, well, I mean, not even. To an extent, sort of. right? It, it, it's mostly separate from the Skywalker And we talked saga. about this in a, in a previous episode where it's yeah. like, okay, this is the point where the EU would have started going all over the place with other stories, possibly. In, in the books and comics media. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is the, this is the point where, okay, this new canon having novels and comics and so far they've all had to do it. They've all had to, they've all had a relation to the films or, or TV shows. So if this project luminous thing, I'm hoping that it is something that's just like a, a, a new era or a new story that really is an opportunity to just, tell a completely new thing while that era might be something that obviously there's history in with the yeah, Jedi and there's right. other stuff that's fine. But to really be able to just be like, Hey, well, you've heard of that era and obviously it's affected things that are happening, but there, everything has kind of been rebooted to a point where anything told in that era is going to be brand new. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I and anything that's, that, that's what that I ends want. up surviving from that era to the era we already know it's going to be real loose. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, right. It's not locked into stuff like like Rebels, for example, was. Right. Or Rogue One, you know, where it's like locked into this timeline really tightly that it has to, mm -hmm. it has to honor very specific things. Yeah, this doesn't really have to do that. Yeah. I, and obviously, other than, I other guess. Old Republic stuff. I mean, we've had Old Republic stuff and we've had. Um, Other than like the EU stuff, right? References to the EU stuff that people have already heard from, sure. from way back when, like the Great Sith War and and uh, other like early early Jedi stuff, right? So yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Obviously, we've there's there's not been. I'm trying to even remember to the EU how much Old Republic stuff did we really have. And this is the High Republic, which isn't even the Old Republic. Old Republic stuff? Yeah, I don't... So if we're talking about High know. Republic, which isn't Old Republic, mm -hmm. that's an era that I don't think has ever been touched. High Republic? Yeah. That era. Because that would be before... No, I would say in the EU, that has been the era pre-Old Republic, which I think they were just calling the Old Republic. Maybe. In the EU time, anyway. It could be. They, there were more references to that than the Old Republic that we know now in the prequels. Maybe. You know? Yeah, it just, I, <clears throat> it would be cool if it is something historical. Yeah. That would, I mean, that's just a good idea, I think, at this point. Because we've had so much new and so much pertaining to the new that I think getting something that is history with, not necessarily characters we know, but possibly characters we know from at least the Republic or the Jedi or something like that. Yeah. I mean, going back that far, I mean, do we end up having people like Plagueis or, I mean, with the Jedi, you know, what Jedi go back to that, to that era or I don't, you know, it's, it, it's it'll be interesting to see if we go back to that, what, what would tie in or would anything even tie in or would it purely be just historical? Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential there for the Jedi in particular. 
um, to kind of see how much the Jedi Order that we knew from the Old Republic time, that mm-hmm. era, how much that was kind of perver- uh, a perversion of what the Jedi Order started as. Started as. Or what the Jedi religion at least started as. It's true. You know? I think that will be really interesting to see. Like, maybe it started in a more pure place, in a more true balanced place than what the Order ended up being. Yeah. You know? And the council and, and all the politics and stuff that kind of come along with that. Right. Yeah, that is something... I mean, I, I mean, this is that point where it's like, okay, they have the opportunity to get as deep as they want, right? Because, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but obviously in the EU and novels and stories we had, some of them were pretty niche, right? There were definitely things that weren't that were very a niche market to telling a story about something that wasn't a high profile thing. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you got into some of that weird science fiction and you had some of those, yeah, there, like was very, more, there was more freedom, I guess, if, if that's what you mean. Well, yeah. And as, but it was, it was messy, which was the problem. Yeah. Whereas, okay. So we've had all these, we've had all these books that have tied into other things and it's all been very revolving around these, these big stories. And I think this is that opportunity. I mean, obviously, novels and comics is kind of the place for this to take place. But this is the opportunity where you could actually get deep as far as storylines and stories go and it not be so high level, um, big picture type story. Sure. Too. Yeah. I kind of miss that. I, I, I miss that that granular detail that some of the like some of the weird novels went to or it's like yeah. there's just like these one offs here or there or these little series that were just very granular focusing on one thing that didn't really matter but it was just a cool story that happened in Star Wars yeah where we haven't had that from a novel standpoint or even a comic standpoint because as long as it has felt since Star Wars has come back we're still very much in the early stages of Star Wars having come back yeah. So this would be the time when they have that opportunity to one, open it up to something completely different and two, start. I don't want the novels to become a fan service thing too, because that's what I remember as a kid is how much the books were so very specific and particular and granular and just completely another kind of Star Wars. Mm hmm. And I, I, I hope I hope there's some sort of move in that direction where there are just a, a opening up of different eras and stories and things that are just their own, kind of like what we want, what we're hoping from if the Ryan Johnson movies ever happen, which at this point I'm probably going to say they're not going to, where it's just like you can have other stories in Star Wars. Yeah. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be so... I don't know. So it doesn't have service. to be tethered to this big, right, grand thing. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, right. Like I mean, like we've talked about before. There's the you know the bounty hunter books, and there was the you know there was just all these other stories that were just so like the like the Young their, Jedi so Academy. On their own. The uh, what was what was that series? What was that series called? It's like the Young Jedi Knights. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Was that with Jason and Jaina, or was it? Was it I other characters? Remember. I can't, I can't remember, remember now. But like those, of, those kind of both. went in and out of right. the main storyline, you know, kind of well, did their it's own like thing within, a little within bit. within that era or within that story, but it just has nothing to do with it. And almost. I'm thinking too of like, I mean, I guess this is more of an Alphabet Squadron type of book, but like the X-Wing series, those were right. always really good. Um, And those got very specific into, I mean, they almost read like a Tom Clancy novel in a way. Right. And it was, but I mean, again, and it's, it's hard to explain with words it's just in general. That's <laughs> how I feel most days, but <laughs> where I guess I just haven't had that same feeling. And maybe it's just cause I'm old now and I'm jaded, and sad, but 
The I mean, I, I like you You're said, jaded I, Pinkett Smith. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Boo. Uh. <laughs> Even the Alphabet Squadron, and I, and to an extent, I guess it's kind of like the the Rogue Squadron books or the you know the those books, but. Yeah, Rose Squadron series was good too. It is a story within a within the main story, but it still feels so high level around that story that it doesn't feel as like. Wasn't I saying at some point a while ago on some episode? I mean, I'm sure we've said everything at this point. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I I would love to see a Tom Clancy type book in the set in the Star Wars universe where everything is very detail oriented very specific very like grounded you know in a way yeah that i mean yes there are characters and 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 those characters are developed and have arcs right. in the story but everything all the details are just very everything's very detailed in a way that the eu a lot i think is what you're saying a lot of the eu books had that and maybe that's what i get from from the timothy zahn books Yes, there's just the, yeah. The Thrawn series is is like that. It's close to that. Where it's just the the way. Is it just a style of writing then? Maybe may, that you're looking maybe, for. Maybe, maybe we just, Timothy Th- Zahn needs the, to just write everything. The fact that you're referencing Tom Clancy books, I think, just proves the point that we're old and we now just want to read Tom <laughs> Clancy books. Hey, I'm actually reading Tom Clancy books. So, I, I, so there you go. I, yeah, I understand this, and that's the problem. <laughs> that is a problem. Why couldn't Star Wars just be like ships in a bottle? Just get rid of all the the space and and put it put it on Earth. That's what it needs. It needs to be on Earth. It needs yeah. to have submarines. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 Nazis. And, Why can't st- <laughs> and just just make it World War Two. And yeah, just submarines and Nazis in World War II. Then Star Wars would be good. I think we've just turned into old people, and maybe what we're asking for is is books that no one else wants at this point, and that's why we're not enjoying them as much. We are those people now. Yeah, <laughs> probably. That's probably it. But I mean, that's not that's not fully what I mean. It's just, I want the stories that are within the stories within the stories. Where it's like it's just I I miss those granular. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Like you were saying with like the uh, the X wing the X wing books and the, the you know there's it's almost like this inception of a story where it's, you know obviously it's within the main story, but within a story within that and then it's these granular stories like these granular stories of people that are within this bigger story that's within this even bigger story i feel like there's Mm. there's not been that at least it hasn't felt that way is this what you mean do you mean like when the x-wing books would get into specific ships and like it's kind of implied that things in the universe have a history. So like, you know, uh, uh, models of ships or, or uh, companies like manufacturers and stuff have a history in universe. Like those types of things, those, those types of details in a story where it's like this, there's kind of this history that's implied. Yeah, I think so. I think that's some of it. Because everything's been so focused on It sounds bad. It's everything's so focused on telling a story, which that's obviously the whole. I think though, I think that's point. a side effect of blowing up the EU. May, because I mean, now, to now, an extent, but I just now when you bring these references back, if you bring them back at all, like with Thrawn, you kind of have to reset the context for oh, that. So oh, you oh, have right. to like explain everything. Everything has to kind of be there to serve a story. You it know, doesn't, it doesn't feel as lived in. A yeah. lot of the stories don't feel as lived in. Yeah. There are some yeah. that do, but the, but a lot of them just don't feel. Yeah, it's hard to. It doesn't feel as living as Star Wars is. It's hard to articulate. Yeah, it exactly. is. And it's just like, like I said, this, you know, if, depending on what Luminous is, I mean, either way, I'm, 
I'm going to be glad that it's a new story. But I really, I, I do kind of want that that history of something that they have to explain something to me because it's new. Yeah. Because then it 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 exists and it's living and breathing, and they have to get into detail. Well, you it. know, I mean, honestly, I think we're just turning into old people, and that's probably true. I <laughs> I really, I just need things explained to me at this point. I'm just old and you have to explain the Star Wars and I don't know if any of that made sense. I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to think of it. The reason I say that is because it's, it's, it is this. I miss Star it's Wars. It's a familiar universe. I miss Star Wars feeling old. Yeah. See, and but I think that's really just us being old. But is it though? Because that's kind of the point of Star Wars and what they... I mean, with everything with Star Wars is, I mean, if you, it's if you trying listen, to attract Star Wars is trying to attract a, a new audience. Shut up at this point. Shut your mouth. <laughs> but I mean, isn't that what everyone is complaining about with the movies that is trying to attract a new audience that it's yeah, that it's not, it's not gritty and real and grounded anymore. It's this, but then it is. And they just, these fun sh- adventures and <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know, yes. And no, well, I don't, I don't agree with that with the new films because they did feel, well, except for the last one. I think they did feel lived in and felt old. I don't know. There's just something about Star Wars that doesn't I'd say feel f- yeah, as I'd say old Force as Awakens it used to. Does. Well, the Last Jedi does pretty well at that, too. Because that was always the thing with Star Wars, right? Is it, it, it feels, it, it, well, because it has. It, it, it is old. It yeah. has existed. And we're jumping into the middle of something that has been and will be and was. Yeah. And I feel like at some point, some of this stuff just doesn't feel as lived in. It doesn't feel like it has a history. It's I'm saying, I'm telling and maybe you, maybe that's us. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it's be. Star Wars is not for us anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's not true because I've enjoyed almost everything that that doesn't that's mean. Okay, new. well, let's say I'll say that doesn't mean. Well, I mean that doesn't say anything about my enjoyment of it. I still, I'm still right, on board exactly. for stuff, but I have to say that because I'm I'm hosting a podcast that's about Star Wars. <laughs> I have to say that I'm on board for it. Sure, but uh, I yeah I I don't I don't think it's for it's it's for. People who don't know about that. It's history. for people that don't know about Star Wars. Yeah. No. <laughs> but no one knew about Star Wars when it when it started and it Yeah, and we and didn't have felt, any of that extended universe. Old. That we had the extended it universe still felt old though. In between Return of the Jedi and the prequels. That was the biggest right. era of the sure. of the EU. When there was nothing else. You know? And now we've got, and then the prequels happened and then Disney bought Lucasfilm and blew up the EU. Right. So yeah, now we, now we have a Star Wars that's trying to attract the people that grew up on the prequels or that saw First Awakens. And that was the first time they saw Star Wars, you know, it's but just, even, but even that doesn't, but the, I guess the people who are reading the comics and books at this point, I would say are they're trying to attract the people that grew up on the prequels. Sure, and that's fine. Which don't have the EU. And and while telling good stories is always preferable to not telling stories, right? You know, Alphabet Squadron is is great and the Thrawn books are are great and but my favorite thing about Star Wars has always been stuff that expands the scope of what is Star Wars, not necessarily the story yeah. of Star Wars. You know, I don't need to know more about the Death Star. I don't need to know more about Darth Vader, but stuff that has expanded the scope of that universe and just opened up other windows into what is, what can be. Something that the Mandalorian, for example, did really well. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying that's what I would want to see that too. I'm just saying. That's why I'm saying, like, if I, I hope there is something about the High Republic just because. That yeah, gives yeah. like a whole new window into what was and has been. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. And as much as I love all these stories that have been released, all the comics and, and novels, they're just kind of sitting in this period. Yeah. And they're not expanding the scope of what Star Wars is or can be. Yeah. Like, for example, the new Darth Vader series that's going on in the comics. That's right. going it, on right it's, now. It's great. It's... But we're, um, we're wallowing. We're wallowing in a time period. Exactly. I think at this point, yes. Like the thing, I think the latest we're, thing to come out of that series is there's some like Padme clone or lookalike. Yeah. People are see? thinking it might be one of her handmaidens or, 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 or yeah, or something like that. But like that's yeah. At this point, we're just kind of okay. We're just retelling stuff. I mean, like the shoehorn from last episode. We're you know we're having to shoehorn in these stories to this comfortable period. With this, everyone's comfortable with this period. So with let's just saber. keep telling stories within this period because everyone's comfortable with, with the it. saber, right? Is that what you're right. talking about? I don't yeah. want to be comfortable with Star Wars. I want you yeah. to to open it up and make it this lived in, breathing world that that has scope. And yeah. I feel like the scope of Star Wars has been narrowed by having to wallow in this certain comfortability that that we're sitting in. And I'm hoping what Project Luminous is is something else that can at least expand the scope of what Star Wars can be. Yeah. We've talked about this before, about it's, how things are... at that are time point where you need to do that. Kind of... Things are kind of being safe a little bit, you know? And that was fine in the beginning. And I think now that we've finished a movie and we've had to sit in that period for, what, six seven years now yeah well, well we finished the saga that saga is done this with. is now where you need to be like okay but star wars is also all these other things sure uh, i i don't want to i don't want to sit in one i mean i will say all of the books that are scheduled to be released in the next few months great. are still in that time period yeah you know but and, and i'm and, and i'm sure they're great i mean the ek johnston books have all she she's a fantastic author uh, Timothy Zahn, uh, obviously one of my favorite Star Wars authors. Every book that he's released, I've loved. Yeah. Um, the Alphabet Squadron books, one of m one of my more more favorite recent releases. Yeah. And I'm fine. I, I I love that there are still Star Wars stories being told, but I they're not expanding Star Wars. They're yeah. Not, they're not adding to Star Wars. Yeah, which goes a, back to the conversation we've had before. When you expand Star Wars, what what is it? Because that means you have to walk away from Star Wars itself right. in a way, because that's all we've known so far is the Skywalker saga. Sure. So you have to walk away from that and then kind of figure out, okay, well, what is Star Wars if you take it away from this, the only story that we've known right. since it existed? You know, I, so I can understand why I guess they're reluctant to do that. But I agree Maybe. with you that I think it's time for that. Well, it's like as much as I may or may not have liked Rogue One, my one of my favorite things about Rogue One is how it kind of gave a different perspective on what the the rebellion was. Yeah, it wasn't just the five people we knew of or, you know, whatever. Right. It wasn't it, the, it the it, heroes we and saw. Especially like the opening with Cassian and like how dirty that is and how, yeah, like no shit. That's how they would have to be to survive yeah and that expands the scope of what star wars is it's not you know it's it's not this this pretty thing that that it can't has been or or has been shown to be and it's like i, I just it, i enjoy the things that expand the it, it makes star wars more living yeah and when you sit in one time period, you're not... It makes the universe deeper. It's stagnating yeah. in, a, in a time period, and I want it to be... I want there to be that depth that... Right. That we've, we've had before, and it can still be, especially now that we have yeah. the opportunity to add that depth because you have kind of rebooted everything. I think as good as Solo was, for example, I think that was another example of just kind of it didn't wallowing... Add, it didn't add to. Yeah. It it's it, it played it pretty safe with the ties to the rest of the universe or like where it could have gone right in the universe, you know, like the the furthest you kinda get to the edge is with the mall reference right. from Clone Wars, which is a pretty deep Clone Wars pull. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, the majority of the people that saw that movie had no idea why he was in it or... What that even meant. What it yeah. meant, exactly, yeah. Um, Or, you know, like the fact that Han grew up on Corellia, that's, that's kind of a deep pull. You know, like that's never really... That was never really discussed in the movies other than the Millennium Falcon was a Corellian ship, you know? Right. That Han was from Corellia, he grew up there, and his father made ships, and yeah, that worked in the shipyards and stuff like that. That that, that was analogy, kind of a deep hole, but at the same time, still so, sort of in a box, very safe right. box. It's like so you go to work every day, and there's those people that you just see at work every day, and you talk to, and you're you're friends with them at work. You're you're fine. You're whatever. But then there's also that person you work with and you see every day at work. But then you also do stuff with them outside of work, and you're actually friends, and you know them. Sure. I feel like Star Wars currently, at least in the in the extra in the books and, and comics, is that friend at work that you don't you only see at work every day, <laughs> right? You have you you're seeing them in one context all the time, and you're not changing that context, and you really don't care. So to what you're that saying context. is you want to take Star Wars out to the club. I want to go bowling with Star Wars. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> is that the episode title? You want to go bowling? I want to go bowling with Star Wars. Yeah, I think that's as close as we're going to get so far. Okay. We'll see if anything better happens. We'll wait till five minutes before it ends. Because <laughs> right. that's usually where the episode titles That's come where we from. lose our minds and something really <laughs> insane comes We out. snap. <laughs> that's, where, that's where we snap. We have been recording for an hour somehow at this point. <laughs> Just complaining about how Star Wars isn't Tom Clancy's space uh, sub novels. <laughs> that's exactly. Why isn't Star Wars just Red October? But could you imagine if there was a Star Wars hunt for the Red October, but just spaceships instead? That feels like a very Thrawn type story, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really does. It really does. <laughs> just this slow burn. Military the- <laughs> oriented kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe that's all we want. <laughs> the fact that my biggest asks are for Star Wars to feel old, like a, like a, a, a war documentary. <laughs> And for Star Wars cheers to happen really just means that I need to own a lazy boy and never move from it again. <laughs> because apparently that's you're halfway it. there. <laughs> One day I'll get that lazy boy. Man. Yeah, I, I hopefully any, like I said, I hope, I hope that makes I, sense. That's I mean, the, like a, the analogy I was trying to make is just it, Star Wars is becoming this familiar thing and I don't want Star Wars to feel familiar. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, that's maybe the biggest complaint from the new trilogy. Is that it, I mean, I, Force Awakens being the biggest kind of offender there, that it was just very safe. But I've made that same argument where I, it, 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 it had, had to it be. Had to I be. understand yeah. why it was, yes. But you can't argue that it wasn't safe. You know, it no, was yeah, a yeah. very safe movie. Yeah, definitely. And I, yeah, I don't know. I, and then I think Rise of Skywalker was safe to a, to a flaw. I mean, it was, it was, over, um, it was, yeah, it was confusingly safe. Like, it was like <laughs> let's not explain anything because it might, you didn't not have be to safe. do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then Last like with Jedi, Force Awakens, you kind of had to make a movie like that that kind of reintroduced people. Sure, I get that into into the universe and and what the feeling of it was because it had been so long. But yeah, Rise of Skywalker, you've had two movies at this point. The previous movie kind of blowing up everything that was safe right. about Star Wars, and then yeah, then you have this thing that's like, okay, you don't have to be like this anymore. <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> But and then all the all the stories, all the novels and stuff has been still just like this easing in of that that period, and it's all just familiar territory. While it's good stories, I don't want Star Wars to ever feel familiar. Yeah, because it shouldn't have to. If we're using the work analogy again, Rise of Skywalker is that guy at work that just kind of he says stuff, and you're just you hear it, and you're just like, all right, well, if that's I mean, if you really want to be like that, that's fine. You go off and be like that. I, I'm all for you. You have my support. I'm I mean, never going to do that, but you're you not wrong. You're not right. Go, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see him in the break room and they're talking about 
something that you can give two shits about. <laughs> right. And you're like, hey, man, you're a cool guy, and I enjoy being around you, but good luck in but life. you're not going bowling later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah. I, I still love Rise of Skywalker. I don't think I could ever I say I that do. I don't no, like yeah. that movie. I There are too many parts of it that I really enjoy. No, I, I completely agree. But... Yeah, it's just like it didn't have to be that way. It just didn't have to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just, we'll. I mean, we'll see what Project Luminous actually ends up being, and if that actually does lead to, um, something unfamiliar. Something, the next direction. Something. I mean, even if it's not whole, the next direction for the mo- for the films, I just want something unfamiliar. I just sure. want. I just want it to expand what Star Wars can be because yeah, you have every opportunity to do that because you already dumped the EU. It, it's and you're at a perfect kind of stopping point, right? Yeah. So you have all this history that's alluded to in films and novels and all of that, but we've never really had a deep look into the history of star Wars. Yeah. With the force or the Jedi order or the Sith. And that would be something that's really cool. That would just expand the breathing world of what that all is. Yeah. And that would be a really cool place to go. So yeah. And like 45 said- minutes for me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks for wrapping it up there. Anytime. Uh, hopefully, I mean, we've said before, celebrations coming up mm-hmm. uh, in what do we say August I think it's in August something like that it's later in the year isn't it yes um, do you like that that answer that answered <laughs> nothing <laughs> is it August is it that sometime it's later in the year uh huh <laughs> is it later in the year it is I believe I believe it was August I think we thought it was earlier but we found out last episode it's later or some episode. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when things date. happen. It's August 27th. We say things and then they disappear in our, from our minds. This we is... say these things to get them out of our heads, I no, think no. is why we have this show. Recording a podcast is like going into a fugue state where it's just, you, you wrap it up and you're like, wait, uh, where are we? <laughs> what have we done? Why am I wet? Oh my God, it's 11 p.m. What, did, <laughs> what happened to the last three hours? When did you get here? <laughs> How long have you been here? <laughs> What day is it? Are these my pants? <laughs> Are these my pants? <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, that um, we'll, I mean, we'll, we have to hear at some point. Something has what to happen next, before August. What the next right. film media Something must be. happen before August. They can't go that long without something some being announced. Some sort of announcement, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I mean, there's, there's obviously the Obi Wan show got pushed a little bit. The Cassian Andor show is supposed to start filming this year, which means it might get, it may move in front of Obi Wan. Maybe depending because, on how long Obi Wan production is not supposed to start until 2021 now. Yeah. Uh, so ca- the Cassian series might might move around a little bit. What was I saying earlier? Obi-Wan. That the Cassian show is the Obi Wan show, and right? It just in starts disguise. out with them, and then they get to Tatooine, and then just pans over, and there's the Obi Wan, and then it never references Cassian again. Yeah, yeah. It just pans over <laughs> to Obi Wan's hut, and then is uh, you have a couple scenes with Obi Wan, and then it's just Obi Wan. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it that just show, and you never see Cassian and K two ever again. No. Yeah, <laughs> it was all a lie. And I mean, Bob Iger's hinted at spinning off characters from Mandalorian into their own shows. I mean, that that show is supposed to come. I mean, season two of that's supposed to come out in October. But yeah, I uh, there has to be Clone a th- Wars is coming out. The last season of Clone Wars is coming out pretty soon. Yeah, but you, next would, couple you weeks, would think, I think, and we keep saying it, you would think at some point what's happening with the next film would be announced. They can't, you wouldn't think they'd wait all the way till August to say something about it. Right. That's what I'm saying. We, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get that soon. I would say before May. Maybe. I, I would think any later than May, and at that point, they're just going to wait. That they're August. not completely out of their minds, <laughs> or in a really bad spot. <laughs> yeah, it just seems a long time to just like forget about Star Wars. Yeah, because I, I mean, the, for the majority of people, Star Wars is the movies. 
Right. And to some extent, the TV shows. Yeah. You know, if it's as high profile as Mandalorian. Right. And, you know. So, yeah, to go that long without any sort of announcement about something new is would be pretty weird. Yeah. Uh, it is would be pretty weird. It, it is would be. It is would be pretty weird. As as is would be us going on any further yes. than this in this episode. <laughs> so, if you enjoy our podcast, which you don't anymore, from all the, the deafness you now have. For all the deafness you now have. <laughs> for the... For the, uh, the I'm sorry uh, for giving you all that deafness. <laughs> for the levels of deafness you... You endure. <laughs> uh, you can you can hit us up on Twitter at Hokey Podcast. That's it. Yeah, at Hokey Podcast. I was about you to didn't give, stutter that time. I was which about is to good. give, but then I almost added on. Then the you second guessed email yourself address. at the end. <laughs> I was almost going to say at Hokey Podcast at Hokey Religion dot com. That's, that's not at all. A <laughs> you thing. could do that. It wouldn't go anywhere. But <laughs> I mean, you try as you might. <laughs> yes, you can hit us up on Twitter at Hokey Podcast. You can shoot us an email at asklobot at HokeyReligion dot com. And if you really, really like the show, you can go to iTunes and leave us a review or go to patreon.com slash Hokey Not Religion. or? What yeah. are you, insane? Would you rather money or a review? And. Michael? And, okay. <laughs> if you really like the show, pay us money and give us a review. Pay us money to leave a review. <laughs> <laughs> give us your credentials to log into iTunes and we'll do the review for you. <laughs> we'll let you know when we're done and then you can change your password. You pay us and give us your password. <laughs> This makes perfect sense. It's not a it's not a scam. We're gonna buy Shakira's new album <laughs> four times. <laughs> <laughs> Can iTunes... you buy something four times on iTunes? <laughs> yeah, I don't use iTunes, so I'm not sure. But... The answer is no, because I tried to do that today. <laughs> <laughs> How else can I support Shakira? You're really looking for Patreons and uh, I don't know. GoFundMe. It's not Shakira specifically. <laughs> I imagine just her. You're frantically trying to support her however you can financially. <laughs> just, you just shot out of bed. <laughs> Shakira needs me. I shot out of bed. <laughs> yeah. I didn't sit up. I shot out of bed. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just you sprung from a bed, from, from the bed to see what was the matter. And like the matter a, was Shakira needs you. It's like a fish leaping from the water <laughs> onto the ice. <laughs> That's me shooting out the window. Children, get up. Shakira needs us. <laughs> That's me shooting out my bedroom window. <laughs> Shakira needs me. <laughs> uh, but yes, you can go to iTunes and leave us a review if you enjoy the podcast and have not done so yet. We would really appreciate it. Does Shakira have a new album? <laughs> you don't even know. Google. <laughs> If you really enjoy the show past leaving a review, you can go to patreon.com slash hokey religion and support us monetarily because it helps fund the show because it does cost money to provide this to you. Otherwise, Michael needs to find out about Shakira's uh, needs. <laughs> Apparently, does Shakira need Shakira? Do you need me? <laughs> do we need to tweet at Shakira and ask if she needs us? Oh, there's a separate articles for Shakira videography and Shakira discography. Oh, no. El Dorado released in 2017. Oh. Mm. So we need to fund her next It's been album. almost three years at this point. So she does need us to help so fund she, the next Yeah, album. she needs us for a different reason. So go to patreon.com slash hokey religion and give us money so we can give it to Shakira. <laughs> yes. Please. We need to <laughs> help a, Shakira. Put in a note that it's, a new album. That it's for, no, Shakira. for Shakira so we can put it in the right um, account. And we promise you we will <laughs> forward some of that money to Shakira. <laughs> in some capacity. In some... I will be buying her albums or at her door. <laughs> <laughs> Paying for a bus ticket to find a Shakira. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to find a Shakira. <laughs> Have you seen a Shakira? Have you seen the Shakira? <laughs> the Shakira. <laughs> oh, no. And this is the part in the last five minutes where we snap. So we need to end this now. We need now. to be done with this right now. We should have been done earlier. Thank you for listening to Hokey Religion episode 110. This is Tyler. This is Michael. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm
match for a good blast here inside. 